just last week, we lost Sidney Poitier. Uh, you are a follower of popular culture clo- more close than I am. But even I know about the impact of Sidney Poitier because, actually, John, you were just a babe in arms. <laughs> 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 when was Lilies of the Field? Uh, w- 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 when was uh, To Serve with Love? Uh, when was uh, In the Heat of the Night? I mean, did you ever see these movies in the theater? I, I doubt it. I've seen them all, not in the theater, but that's because I'm crazy and I'm obsessed with the past. But yeah, To Serve With Love, I think, is 62. I know Lily's uh-huh. the Field, there was a musical of it in 1968, which means the movie must be, say, five years before. And yeah. In the Heat is that great year of 60... Is it 69? Um, Dr. Doolittle, In the Heat of the Night. There were a bunch. That's it's either 67 or 69. So, yes, at that time, I'm a babe in arms, whereas you actually saw them. Yeah. They call me Mr. Tibbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A line that will echo in uh, filmic history, you know. <laughs> you know, with, with him, I understand the iconic status. He was in a lot of great movies. He was a great actor. Raisin in the Sun, which I took a look at oh, recently. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. I... It's funny, there's something about him when I was a kid and even beyond. I never thought of him as iconic in the way that everybody else does. It's not that I didn't think he was good, but I never thought, well, here was this pioneer. Even though he was the first you know, black actor to play dignified parts in one movie after another, I get that intellectually, but it never, it was rattling around the back of my mind. It never sat with me that he was this black presence. And as I got older, I realized what it was. He was a very interesting transitional figure in that he was Caribbean. He had yeah. a bit of an accent. And so the way that everybody read him, partly because, you know, especially white viewers just basically saw all black men as one mass at the time. Some people would say they still do. I doubt it. But certainly back then, everybody's saying, here's this black man on screen. But I always thought, no, here's this Caribbean on screen. He didn't talk the way Walter Younger would have spoken as a man who was grew up in Chicago. You know, in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, I didn't think, here's this black man marrying this oh, white yeah. girl. I thought, here's this Caribbean black man marrying this white girl. It's a whole different equation. And I know that in those roles, we're supposed to think that this character grew up in Chicago or Philadelphia or something like that. But I never even started to believe it. And so now I look back and I realize that's the way it had to have been. I mean, he was a necessary transitional figure. In 1959, if you're going to do the defiant ones or something like that, there's no way that it would have worked for white America if he were a black man who sounded like a black man from the United States. It had to start with this person who actually sounds like he's from the islands, and so it kind of leavens what people thought of as blackness. And I get the feeling nobody was thinking about it much at the time, but he paved the way for black American actors to come in and be leads starting really majorly in the late 70s and especially the 80s. That's how I always saw him. I thought of him as a Caribbean actor playing a black American actor. But maybe I'm thinking too much. But that sounds how I- like an insight to me, John. I think you ought to write it up if you haven't already. Hmm. Uh, I mean, what, uh, he, what does he do? He, he embodies and projects a kind of dignity. I think that is the key word, dignity and fury. I mean, he could, he, you know, to, it, those things go together because, after all, segregation and Jim Crow are a motherfucker, man. They got their boot, they are a literal knee on your neck. So the guy is angry, but in a way that the mainstream audience that read white audience would accept. Uh, he's not Malcolm X. He, he you know, he, he, exactly. he's not threatening quite in that way. And it may well be that the cultural nuance that you're calling attention to the slight lilt of the Caribbean accent and whatnot, maybe even the look. I mean, he's dark skinned. I, I don't know. I'm not, this is not my field, but I, I can imagine that someone who studies this might go into that. Doesn't quite strike the audience as that guy in the ghetto who's, who's about to come and get me and, uh-uh. you know, rape uh-uh. my mother or whatever. No. So he's able to, he's able to get away with some stuff. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I really think that was it. Also, even the way he walks, he walks like a Caribbean man. He does not have the quote unquote street short drop black swagger. You know, he was a different thing than, I think America would have been scared of someone like, say, Jim Brown. 
who you know was a native born yeah. black American person. You know, he didn't become a major movie star. He did some. Now, Portier, Portier and Harry Belafonte are are contemporaries, and Belafonte quite obviously is a is a Caribbean calypso singer, oh, and a great a great artist without any doubt, but also a political radical in a way that Very. Portier never was. But Belafonte also, this is the thing: he grew up in Harlem. You know, that was another thing. His career was predicated partly, and I'm not saying he was a phony, but that yeah. emphasizing the Belafonte name and all that Deo stuff, that went over in a way that Black American stuff would not have. You know, the idea that he was from the islands. He grew up on 125th Street. I mean, I'm making a street. Deo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that stuff sound pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he was great. And he was a political, I mean, I think he thinks of his main contribution to life to be his politics. And I, I get it. And true. But that Deo thing, that was a sidestepping what I don't think white America was really ready for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.